born in England. You should, therefore, know in fairness, I was born in Cobalt. Now, there's no reason to laugh about that. I was born in Cobalt. And I, by the way, I brought along a couple of books about Cobalt. If anybody's interested, they're free because I wrote them for sale, but they didn't sell, so they're free. <laughs> But we moved, when I was very young, we moved to Lindsay, Ontario, and St. Paul's Anglican Church became my second home, or maybe my first home. My mother pretty well ran the church from the position of head of the youth and Sunday school. We were there all the time. So some of my fondest memories as a toddler are sitting in the pews of that old church and watching the morning sun stream in, reflect off Mother's diamonds, and I was there three years old watching all this. But as I grew up, of course, I became a young adult, I was brainwashed by Christians. Later, like many young adults, I decided that logic was more important than was this rope that they had taught me. So I said to myself, I will believe nothing unless it is logical. So now, 65 years later, I realize that nothing about Christianity is logical. Even though I still consider the Lord's Prayer, which we recited earlier in this sermon, as the most important words in the English language, people sometimes forget that the Lord's Prayer is centered on forgiveness. Every Christian says, Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. And the stress in there is, as I forgive others. If you don't forgive, you're in trouble, my friends. Yet very few people, Christian or non-Christian, practice forgiveness. If, I, if Christians, not let alone the rest of the world, but if Christians were to practice forgiveness, there would be many fewer wars and much less crime. We see this silly war going on in the Middle East again where they're throwing rockets at each other because they can't forgive one act or another. Forgiving people around us is the toughest thing to do, very hard to do, and yet it's a recipe for a happy life. Is there someone today that you should forgive? If so, do it. All these years later, I find no logic whatsoever in Christianity, and yet I still believe. You see, as a young person, I made many mistakes, but the most critical mistake I made was in the idea that I could choose whether or not to believe. I thought that was a decision of mine to make. If I didn't like the logic, I wouldn't believe, you see. But I was wrong. It was God's choice. He chose me to be a believer, and I've been a believer ever since. God made that choice on the day I was born, and Lloyd's now going to tell us why. Oh, I believe for every drop of rain that falls, the flower grows. I believe somewhere in the darkest night a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come to show the way. I believe. I believe above the storm, the smallest prayer will still be heard. And I believe that somewhere in the great somewhere, someone hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry, or touch a leaf, or see the sky, then I know why I believe. Every time. Hear a newborn baby cry, or touch a leaf, or see the sky. Yes, I know why. I believe. 